Let's talk about the thyroid and getting pregnant, what you need to know. Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. So I am here to talk all about your body and your fertility. Would love it if you would subscribe and follow along and support the channel. Today I'm diving down into the thyroid, something I really love to talk about and I think it's really interesting and it definitely impacts reproduction. It can be a little bit controversial out there and therefore it's confusing because when different organizations or different doctors have different feelings, you may hear different information. So I want to try to break down the basics of how your thyroid works, why it's important and what you need to know, and kind of touch on the points that are a little controversial. So your thyroid gland lives in your throat. It is a butterfly shaped organ. It is controlled by the brain. So the brain sends out a hormone from the pituitary gland called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And just like other endocrine systems in our body, the pituitary secretion of TSH is in control from a hypothalamic hormone called TRH. So TRH comes from the hypothalamus. It tells the pituitary gland to release TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, which then tells the thyroid gland to make more or less thyroid hormone. And circulating thyroid hormone is called T4 and T3, like actually called thyroid hormone. So what we do is the brain then interprets how much circulating T4 and T3 you have, and it sends out TRH and TSH in response to what it senses. This is an important concept, and number one most confusing thing about thyroid is that what we tend to check in screening is TSH, the hormone from the pituitary gland. Again, this is the hormone telling the thyroid gland to make circulating thyroid hormone. Although you can and will check circulating thyroid hormones in certain circumstances, the truth is every one of us needs a different amount of thyroid hormone. And when we check TSH, what we're checking is our brain's interpretation. Is it getting enough thyroid hormone or is it not? And therefore it is sending out TSH in response to that. So step number one is to understand the difference in hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroid is when you have a high TSH. What it is doing is your pituitary gland is sending out all the signals it can to try to get that thyroid gland to send out more thyroid hormone because your brain is interpreting low hypo levels. So high TSH equals hypothyroid, thyroid gland not making enough thyroid hormone. When your TSH is low, that is hyperthyroidism, meaning the thyroid gland is making so much thyroid hormone that the brain is now being suppressed and not sending out any TSH because it is seeing too much thyroid hormone. So low TSH, hyperthyroid hormone, too much circulating thyroid hormones. A couple things that are important to know is that in order to make thyroid hormone, the body needs iodine. So automatically, if you live somewhere that is iodine deficient, you will have hypothyroidism purely because the body can't make enough thyroid hormone. And this is why a lot of our food, specifically salt, is supplemented with iodine. Now, fancy salts, you'll see some of your like pink Himalayan salt actually doesn't have iodine in it. So you want to check that because iodinized salt is a good source of iodine. And that's why we supplement salt in this country with iodine. So we don't see iodine deficient hypothyroidism. Another important thing to know is that the production, is that the production of the receptors for TRH changes based on estrogen. So you will see thyroid hormone fluctuations throughout your reproductive life, specifically in your pregnancy, and that's why it becomes important in this context. So typically, if you go to the doctor and you say, I am not feeling right, or can you check my thyroid? The number one test that somebody's gonna order is a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Actual averages depend based on which lab, but typically we see normal ranges from about 0.5 to four and a half. If you are just walking around planet Earth and your TSH is higher than four and a half, you have hypothyroidism. Common symptoms of hypothyroidism include dry skin, hair loss, 
fatigue, weight gain, slow reflexes. Essentially think about your metabolism is slowing down and your body is not performing as well as normal. You can also start to see menstrual cycle changes with hypothyroidism, so irregular periods or even absence of periods altogether. The number one cause of hypothyroidism in the US is an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's. In severe form, when your TSH is really high, this can actually get really severe and you can end up hospitalized, you can get a lot of swelling, heart problems. In general, it's pretty easy to treat hypothyroidism. There is a synthetic medication that is made to look like the thyroid hormone of T4 and is called levothyroxine or Synthroid. And this is weight-based dosing. So you need to make sure that somebody is dosing you based on your weight and there's different doses if you're pregnant or not pregnant because the amount of thyroid hormone you need differs in these two states. When we're treating people with hypothyroidism, we usually are looking to have a thyroid hormone in the lower end of the normal range, meaning 2.5 or less. And there's some studies that come with reproduction about why I target that number in my patients who are trying to get pregnant or pregnant specifically. On the other hand, hyperthyroidism is when there's too much circulating thyroid hormone. This is actually more complicated to treat. So it's not as simple as giving some thyroid hormone replacement. You actually have to stop the production from the thyroid gland. The symptoms are, include like an increased metabolism. So weight loss, nervousness, insomnia, having your heart race, sweating. Similarly, from a period standpoint is you can also see irregular cycles with hyperthyroidism. And some of the severe complications can include irregular heart rates and even like mental changes. There's a couple main treatments for hyperthyroidism. One is medication options such as methimazole or PTU. Another is actually ablation of the thyroid gland putting yourself in an induced state of hypothyroidism and then replacing with levothyroxine or Synthroid. Those are two treatment options depending on your circumstance that your endocrinologist would talk to you about. However, they both have different reproductive consequences if you're trying to get pregnant, meaning with one of them, the different medications are contraindicated at different times in pregnancy. And in the other one, you don't want to get pregnant or a period of time after an iodine ablation because it's radioactive, lives in your bloodstream, and it could kill a fetal thyroid gland. So the timing and your reproductive goals must be discussed if you have hyperthyroidism about what the best option is for you. I have some patients who don't want to undergo the medication changes. We go through and we make embryos and we freeze them. They get their ablation and wait their time out, and then we do embryo transfer. But there's a lot of different ways to get there depending on your goals, your age, and other reproductive dynamics. So definitely talk candidly about that. Okay, so let's dive into thyroid gland and pregnancy and those trying to get pregnant. In pregnancy, one thing we know is that there is an increase in estrogen and an increase in that pregnancy hormone HCG, and these both change the synthesis of thyroid hormone receptors. And essentially what happens is that you have a greater need for thyroid hormone in early pregnancy, and so a lower therapeutic range of your TSH. So if you check a TSH level in somebody in the first trimester of pregnancy, we want it to be less than 2.5. So not that 4.5 number. This has been extrapolated to infertility data. And so we feel the same way in our patients trying to conceive. Overall, I hope this helps you understand a little bit about basic thyroid physiology, what is hypo and hyperthyroidism, how they intersect with your periods, miscarriage, infertility, and pregnancy, and answer some of your basic questions. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD for more. Thanks, friends.